I'm guessing you've tried rum before. I'm also guessing you've tried gin, which is made with botanicals. But have you ever tried botanical rum? Let's make some. How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, this is Still It, and we are making botanical rum today. But what the Sam Hill is that stuff? I think the rum part is fairly clear, right? We're going to make this with rum. What's rum? It's a spirit made from sugarcane. Okay, let's put that aside for now. Botanicals. What are botanicals? Botanicals technically are the category that incorporates both spices and herbs. So it's a rum that's got spices and herbs, which is pretty damn close or similar to a spiced rum. What's the difference? For starters, there is a very sort of standard flavor profile that I would attribute to spiced rum. It tends to be, especially in the you know popular commercial versions, really heavy on the vanilla. And it generally has a sprinkling of, I guess, baking spices, you would call them, uh, cinnamon, cloves, maybe some ginger, or even a little bit of black pepper, something like that. But it's, it's a fairly narrow band of experience in terms of the flavors you're going to get from it. And generally, those flavors are achieved by maceration. So you, you make the rum, you soak it in the spices, uh, and then you strain the spices out and you're left with a spiced rum, which is often then barrel aged, or it was barrel aged beforehand. You, you get the idea, right? So what are we doing differently today? We're gonna take all of the botanicals we're gonna use, and we're gonna put them into a still, and then redistill the rum to infuse the flavor. Much more like a gin. And of course, the flavors that we decide to incorporate in this are entirely up to us. I'm gonna be trying to create something that kind of sits in between a spiced rum and a gin. I'm gonna take the flavors from a spiced rum that are more likely to work with a gin, and the flavors from a gin that are more likely to work with a spiced rum. So I'm not gonna be using heavy gin flavors like cardamom, for example. I just don't think that would fit. But here's the thing, guys. Uh, on this channel, I very seldomly get to do the same thing over and over again. So instead of just trying it and seeing how it goes, I'm gonna do this twice. I'm gonna take a stab in the dark. I'm gonna shoot from the hip in terms of flavors that I think we should add. I'm gonna see how it turns out and then adjust. Does that sound like fun? Let's get stuck in. First up, let's talk about the rum that I could potentially use for this. And rum is a, a very, very large category in terms of the different flavors that are present. I wanna use something that's just got a little bit of extra rumminess, something that's got a bit of Pizzazz, I hate that word, but you know what I mean, right? <laughs> and for me, pizzazz and rum comes in two forms. One, high ester, funky, crazy Jamaicaniness, and then the other side of things is uh, the yin to its yang is the really heavy molasses style kind of navy rum. I'm gonna use both, I'm gonna blend them together, and I'm thinking, I think that's the, uh, the correct ratio of the two is gonna be two parts of, uh, of the more ester forward stuff and one part of the more molasses style stuff. So I'm gonna go with uh, two cups of the Buccaneer Bobs that I made a long time ago. There'll be a link in the description down below. Uh, and one part of the Pirate Rum that I made a little while back. Uh, if you don't have your own versions of these sitting around, of course you can use commercial products. That, that's entirely fine. It might be a little bit like sacrilege to go out and buy a tasty Esther Ford Jamaican rum and a, <laughs> a molasses -y navy rum and redistill them, but I'll leave that up to you. Next, let's talk botanicals. And like I said, I'm gonna be uh, looking past or just forgetting about two of the main gin sort of style botanicals that I just don't think are gonna fit. That's coriander and cardamom. They're getting the boot, we're not using them at all. Instead, I'm gonna rely more heavily on spices that are often in gin, but not used in high quantities. And I've got a little bit of a ring in that I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen used in gin, and that is cacao nibs. I think that is gonna marry up with the molassesiness of the pirate rum really nicely. But anyway, here is the botanical list. I'm gonna read it to you uh, because there's no way I'll remember this. One cup of pirate rum two cups of Buccaneer Bob's rum, four grams of cacao nibs, one quarter of a cracked nutmeg, two allspice berries, 
five grams of real licorice root, half a star anise pod, one slice of ginger, one and a half grams of dried orange peel, and five grams of juniper berries. All of the ingredients get mixed together into the little air still. The air still gets turned on and we distill it. Now I'm going to go into a little bit more uh, detail in terms of the actual distillation when we get to the second go round. For now, all that's important is I distilled it, I collected it, I proofed it down to 40 odd percent and had a taste. So the plan is to go through each individual ingredient. I've got them all written down here next to me. And for each ingredient, am I going to ask the question, is it actually adding something to the mix? Or is it just complexity for the hell of it? And two, should there be more of it, less of it, or is it perfect? Pretty simple, right? So first of all, the two rums, the mix between uh, the Buccaneer Bobs and the Pirate Rum. And honestly, I'm happy. I feel like that's, uh, it's, it's nailed it. It's exactly where I wanted it to be. So I'm happy there. Next up, the cacao nibs. You can smell them. And, are subtly there at the end of the experience, like right after you've tasted, they pop up. And they're not straight up chocolatey, they're not cocoa y. It's more, um, it's my, more kind of almost like rich and oily chocolate than that. Almost like, almost like, this is going to sound horrible, but I mean it in a good way. Bad, cremeltery Easter candy. But in this, it works. Nutmeg. When I first smelt it, I thought there was too much of it, but I think I got mixed up with something else. Going back and having another smell, yeah. I think actually we could do with just a smidge more, like just a little bit more. I'm kind of disappointed in myself I didn't weigh those. <laughs> uh, all spice berries, can I smell it? Can't smell it. Can I taste it? I really don't think I can taste it either. Yeah, I can't. But honestly, I don't... I don't think I'm missing anything, not having it. I think this is complexity for the hell of it. So we're going to drop that. I think the licorice is good. We could do with just a touch more star anise. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go for. Uh, ginger is good. I, I love it. Uh, there's not a huge flavor contribution. It's there, but subtle. But what is nice is I'm getting a gentle warming feeling. This could be coming from some of the other spices, but I really think it is from the ginger and I like it. Uh, orange peel. This is where I screwed up. I should have put a whole lot more orange in this. I know the Buccaneer Bob's uh, has a, you know, already has a lot of orangey sort of estery stuff, but that's on the fruity side. And the peel is a little bit different. It's a little bit more lively and kind of just, it lifts things. And I want it to be lifted just a little bit more. So I'm going to double it. And lastly, juniper. Yes, the juniper is definitely doing a job. It reminds me subtly of gin, and it's pretty good. I like it. And it removes this from just being a white spiced rum, I think. So the juniper's good. The biggest mistake I made is not putting in enough orange peel with a few other little changes, I think. I think we're good to go for a, uh, another round. We are up and running for the second distillation and as promised let's talk about the actual distillation process itself a little bit more this time around. Uh, so this is an air still and all that means is that it is a pot still, quite a small pot still to be fair, uh, and it is cooled. The vapour is condensed with air instead of water. That's all this means. So at the beginning I did take a small amount of heads. The reason I took these is I'm not worried about the safety side of it or any of that because it's already a drinkable product that we've got in the still. I'm taking these for flavor and mouth perception reasons. The, the rum that I made is not a super refined, really uh, pretty rum. It, it's pretty down and dirty and it's pretty rugged. And this sort of product could probably benefit with reining that in a little bit. And because we're distilling it again, I have the ability to separate this out and take it away. In addition to, I've found generally that when you're distilling, uh, where's my mic gone? Oh no, we're good. <laughs> uh, when you're distilling botanicals, generally, the, the very first little bit just tends to be odd in flavor. So I like to always reserve at least the right to be able to ditch the heads 
for a, a, a botanical run. Anyway, at this point in time, I like to go into what I call rolling cuts. And all that means is uh, I collect a little bit in a, in a glass or in a jar, and then I switch over to another jar. And that means that I can taste them individually and see how they're going. This is delicious. I'm keeping it. It's going to go into here. This is my keeping jar. Uh, but what it means going forward is that now I can uh, taste. Yes, I still like it. Uh, and at any point in time during the run, I can just switch this out, throw that in there, and now focus on this jar. Uh, the glass is currently this full. And let's pretend that I got distracted for five minutes and it got up to, uh, I mean, double that. But in that process, it changed from what I wanted to keep to what I don't want to keep. I messed up. I let the yucky stuff get through. What the Rolling Cuts does in this situation is allow me to only lose that small little amount that was already in the jar because every time I switch the jar out, I'm protecting what's over here. As opposed to if you just collect it straight into this jar and you messed up, you're stuck with what you've got, right? I know I'm preaching to the choir for most of you, but uh, at the end of the day, there's not a whole lot more to talk about in terms of the actual distillation other than when you're doing things like a botanical run, it is fascinating to see what comes off the still at different points in time. Right now, it actually tastes really quite gingery. Whereas this over here tastes completely different. Like you could convince me if you put these two things in two different glasses that they were two totally different products. So uh, whenever you're running something like this, I would suggest be near, have a taste every now and again, uh, and don't freak out if you taste it and go, holy crap, I put Way too much star anise in this because chances are in two minutes time you'll taste no star anise and when you blend it all back together that's what counts right so I've collected a one and one third cup uh, of distillate that I'm keeping and I'm getting to the point now where yeah calling it there's nothing particularly bad coming off uh, it's just it, just it just tastes like nothing there's nothing there and I've just noticed it looks like it's just starting to head towards being cloudy. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother collecting tails for this. I, it, it, there's no use for it for me right now. Uh, but what I am gonna do is proof this down and uh, and give it a taste. We are proofed down to what are we saying here? Forty-two percent, perfect. Uh, so let's have a wee taste, shall we? Definitely a little bit more orangey on the nose, a little bit fruitier, but balanced with the rest of the spices. And actually, funnily enough, I can smell, I can smell the ginger more now. That's, that's really pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, strangely enough, the ginger is popping a little bit more than I remember from last night, but let's try the old stuff, uh, which by the way, I got stuck into with some tonic. Uh, and lemon, tonic and orange, and tonic and kiwi fruit. And I gotta tell you, the uh, tonic, ice, and kiwi fruit was the way to go for this stuff. It was pretty good. So, the orange is the biggest thing that's changed, which makes sense. That's the thing that I changed most drastically. And it's done what I wanted it to do in terms of just the straight orange. But, um, I feel like it's kind of lifted the whole thing out of being a more grungy rum, which kind of makes sense, but it's also, um, it's, it's weird. The flavor profiles are really quite similar other than the orange, but it feels like so much more like gin because of it. That's really interesting. I'm actually quite proud of both of these. They actually taste really quite good which is almost disappointing for this video <laughs> because so often when I do things like this, the first time around, it's just, it's okay. It has potential. I can see where it can lead to, but it needs refinement, you know? Um, and actually now tasting these side by side, mm, I, I'm struggling to tell which tastes the best. You know what? Let's just go for a good old fashioned 50-50 mix. That might be it. Uh, but first, a huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, Patreons, for being team awesome uh, and supporting me month on month out. I 
I thoroughly, thoroughly freaking appreciate it. So thank you guys. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. So now I'm getting the orange up front, all the spices sitting in between. And then at the end, I've got the uh, the more grungy, molassesy forward rum coming in, but then almost being like tempered and smoothed with the cacao nibs in a very similar way to how vanilla sort of smooths and tempers out a rum in a more traditional spiced rum. That's, I'm just going to mix them right now. <laughs> That's the plan. Uh, so, there you have it guys, uh, botanical rum, which really is just a spiced rum. But I think calling it a botanical rum kind of makes sense because it. if I gave this to you and told you it was spiced rum, you would not believe me. So I think the most intriguing thing about this is that it is not a prescribed, it's not a known, it's not an expected style. Which means you could take it in just about any direction you wanted to. Because it's already just so far out of left field that, um, you know, you've just got to assess it in and of itself. So I'm really interested to hear if, uh, if you guys have tried this. Uh, and if you have, what flavour directions you took it in. If you haven't tried it before... What do you think could be an interesting direction to take this in terms of flavor? Anyway, hope you enjoyed this, guys. If you did, thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that awesome good YouTube stuff. And I'll catch you next time, guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.